Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now, in the next few tutorials, you may notice a slight difference. Now, in this period of uncertainty, I don't have access to my normal recording or baking equipment because I'm also changing location. But don't worry, I've come up with a few back to basic recipes which involves no fancy equipment or ingredients. So I hope you enjoy these recipes, I hope you try them out, and most importantly, stay safe. So you may have only seen hot cross buns in packets, but trust me, they are very doable to make by hand and of course with no special equipment or ingredients. I'm going to start off with my flour in the bowl and go in with some sugar. So this is a sweetened dough, but I am gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt just to bring out the flavors. And then I'm gonna grab my de scraper and just mix the dry ingredients together. Now there are several methods how to make hot cross buns, but this is the way I was taught. I'm going to heat up the milk in the microwave until it's warm. And whilst I wait for the milk to heat up, I'm going to rub the butter into the flour. Some people like to melt the butter in with the milk and then put it in the dough. But because I don't have a bread machine or anything, I feel like to mix in the butter properly, this is probably the most effective way. So like I would with pastry, I'm going to rub the butter in until a sand-like consistency is formed. So the milk is warm. Now you don't want the milk too hot because once you add the eggs, it's gonna start cooking the eggs. But we do want the warmth so the yeast is activated when we add that to the recipe. So the egg and milk can go straight into the flour and butter and now I can go in with the yeast. I am using fresh yeast, but I've given you the option of using dry yeast and written it in the comments below. And then I'm gonna mix this all together. Now I wanted to mix the yeast in a little bit before it went into the flour. So I'm actually using a fork to mix it and it is a very wet and sticky dough. So even when the flour is all mixed in, it's still quite wet. So rather than going in with my hands and making my hands all sticky, I'm gonna go in with my de-scraper and almost do the kneading with the de-scraper in the bowl. Once it's smooth, I'm going to flour my surface and pour the dough onto the flour. And then I am going to knead it. Now it will become quite a sticky mess, but as you knead it, the stickiness will reduce slightly. And this is where the de-scraper comes in handy because you can scrape up the dough back onto itself using the scraper. It's a lot easier to use a scraper than use your hands to do this. You can obviously also do this in a mixer with a hook attachment, but as you're well aware, I don't have my mixer with me at the moment, so I'm going with my hands. So I knead it for about five minutes. And you can see at the end of the five minutes, it is that little bit less sticky, but it is still a sticky dough. So I'm going to form it into as much of a ball as I can. And then here I've got an oiled large bowl, which I'm going to place the dough inside. And the reason for oiling the bowl is so the dough doesn't stick to it. And then I'm going to pour a little bit of oil onto a piece of cling film and give it a nice generous layer before I place it on top. Once again, to prevent the dough from sticking to the cling film. I'm now gonna leave this in a warm place for it to double in size, which should take around an hour. So once the dough has doubled in size, I can remove the cling film, which should come off all in one piece. And I'm going to flavor the dough, but before I do that, I'm just going to knock the dough back a bit by giving it a little punch with my fingertips. And now I'm gonna add the cinnamon and dried fruit. So I've just got raisins here, but you can be quite creative. You can add fresh apple, you can add mixed peel. This bit's completely up to you, however you want to flavor it. And then using my hands, I'm going to mix the fruit and cinnamon into the dough. Now, whilst I was making this, I was wondering why I added the cinnamon at this point and not at the beginning. The answer is because when I first made hot cross buns, I was also making other buns at the same time. So made double the amount of dough and then separated it and then flavored this with cinnamon. But if you wanted to just put the cinnamon in in the beginning, that's also totally fine. However, you will need to leave the fruits for this stage because otherwise the dough won't prove as well. So I'm going to mix that in as much as I can using my hand and give it a little knead to distribute the cinnamon and dried fruit as much as I can. And you can see that the stickiness of the dough has reduced significantly. And if it does get a little bit sticky, you can always use your scraper again. So once the cinnamon and fruit has been dispersed evenly in the dough, you can now put it back into the oiled bowl once again for its second proof. And go over with another piece of cling film. I'm actually using the same to reduce the waste. And this will once again double in size in a warm place. So you can see how much the dough has risen now, and now it's time to shape the dough. Once again, I'm going to knock the dough back. This just keeps the air bubbles as even as possible throughout the dough. So I'm going to throw some flour down and turn the dough out onto the surface and then roll it into a sort of sausage shape because it's the easiest way to cut it into portions. 
So I'm going to get about eight rolls from this. So I'm going to keep cutting pieces of dough in half. And you can weigh them to be more exact, but I'm going to go freestyle. So cut each piece in half until you get eight small balls of dough. So to get them into a nice ball shape, you take one of the small pieces. So you start by squashing the dough, but still rotating your hands. Cup your hand around the dough and a ball shape forms. So try and make the balls as even as possible. I think a couple of mine are a little bit bigger, but I don't mind too much. And here I've got a rectangular tray, which I will bake the buns in, but they do need their third proof before I do so. So I am going to leave a gap in between the buns. However, when they prove and cook, they will grow and eventually stick together. And this is traditionally how hot cross buns are made. So you can tear them apart and get those lovely white sides to the buns. So I'm going to get that piece of oiled cling film and place it over the buns and leave them for about half an hour to double in size before cooking. So while I'm waiting for the buns to prove, now's a good time to prepare your cross mixture. So here I've got some plain flour and some water. Really simple recipe, it's equal amounts of flour and water and mixed together. When I was younger I used to think the cross was really sweet, but always got that little bit disappointed when I realised it wasn't when I ate one. And now I know why. So you want to give it a good whisk until you get a smooth mixture. And then I'm simply going to fill a piping bag. And that's ready to pipe on the buns just before cooking. So as you can see, the buns have risen beautifully and now they're all slightly touching. So just before I cook them, I want to pipe on my cross mixture. So I'm going to cut the piping bag just at the end. And then with an even pressure, go over one row with one line of the flour and water mix and then the other row and then go back horizontally to form the cross. So I've preheated the oven to 180 degrees Celsius and these will now cook for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're beautifully golden brown. So as you can see, the buns have cooked beautifully. And the amazing thing about these buns is that the crosses actually stay white. So what I've got here is a very simple sugar syrup and I'm just gonna go over the top with a thin layer. And this will give it its sticky glaze, which is very traditional for hot cross buns. And just give it that little bit of extra sweetness too. And it's better to do this while they're still hot. Oh, just look at that shine, aren't they gorgeous? And then they're ready to enjoy. So like I said, it's very traditional to pack them together in a tray so when you tear one apart, you get this lovely torn side to the bun. And they're beautiful and light and smell absolutely divine. So traditionally served toasted with a lump of butter on top. Try not to eat them all at once, but definitely give them a go. Please tag me at George's Cakes if you do because I love seeing what you bake out of these back to basic recipes and see you next time. <laughs>